now we come to the subatomic particles and their discoveries okay subatomic particles and the first in line to be discovered was 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 something that is pretty obvious to us nowadays that is electrons <coughs> so so it was the discovery of this discovery of electrons discovery of electrons now there was so many phenomena that were happening that we were not able to explain which actually pointed towards certain particles getting uprooted from one material to another right and one of the one of the most important was the electrostatics okay so electrostatic charges what happened if a glass rod was rubbed with a silk cloth both the silk and the glass got charged in what sense in the sense that if there was a glass rod another glass rod and another silk cloth that means two pairs of it and you did the same to both of them you rubbed both of them with the silk cloth and try to bring the glass rods together they repaired okay they repaired and similarly when you try to bring the silk cloths together they also repel now if same thing must be happening to both of them whatever is happening we didn't know in those days we were not even aware what was happening whatever was happening if that was identical to both of them then we say that if the same thing is happening that means the likes will repel right so the likes repel okay and something else was happening between them that means what whatever was happening with this something opposite was happening with this because then there was an attraction between the two so if you brought the glass rod and the silk cloth together there was an attraction between the two understand so so likes repel but unlike unlike they attract okay unlike attract this was a very elementary first hand notion of charges that men got understand <coughs> we used to wonder looking at the thunder and why the clouds rumble and why there was lightning okay and at times it was fatal when it struck the ground and struck someone or struck some tree okay but this was something that we could relate to there were woolen cloths if you suddenly took it off there were flashes of light and you got a mild shock even today if you are wearing a rubber soled shoe okay and sitting on a vaccine or something and you get up you get a shock okay and at times it is pretty pretty painful painful a shock right so this was one of the first brush of men with the charges okay or electricity you can say fine then there was something else that happened and that is called that is called cathode ray discharge tube the second brush was more technical it was a cathode ray discharge tube
Now, this is not something that a common man would experience. Why? Because these are technical things. A cathode ray discharge tube is, is kind of made like this. <coughs> okay. These ends are rounded. Rounded and these are metal plates, okay. These are metal plates. So this is what it looked like. The negative of the battery, the shorter end, that was connected to this and by convention we call this, we call this the cathode plate. This was the cathode and the positive was connected to this plate that is known as an anode plate. right? The gas within this <coughs> is rarefied, okay? So you have rarefied gas within this. That means at a very, very low pressure. And this is a variable voltage. You can increase or decrease the voltage. Fine. Now it is found that when you increase this voltage a lot, then and and if if there was if there was an ammeter connected here, okay. An ammeter is an instrument that measures current and hence is always connected in <coughs> series. Right? So if you have an ammeter connected here, when this voltage is low, when this voltage is low, you see no current. So, so low voltage, you have no current. As the voltage is increased beyond a point, Suddenly, this ammeter flickers. Right? Okay. This ammeter flickers. And what happens is, 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 is it registers a current. Right? So, something has happened with respect to this low voltage, something else has happened which 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 leads to this current which leads to the flickering of this right now whatever that is correct whatever that is must either be traveling if if say it is negatively charged particle and we already know that that the lights repel if it is negatively charged, then it has to be repelled by the cathode and, and attracted by the anode. Correct? 
because we know that the likes will repel and the unlikes will attract. So if it is negatively charged, this should happen. But but you are still at an experimental stage, so you don't even know what it is, right? So you don't even know what it is. So it may so happen that it is a positively charged thing and it originates from here and gets attracted here. Get that? Both possibilities are there. Because currently we don't know what is happening. We are not able to see the particles. Correct? Now to understand what was happening, whether the thing was streaming from the negative to the positive, that is cathode to the anode, or from anode to the cathode, a very simple thing was done. We perforated the anode. Okay? So, so what we did was, was, anode was perforated. Now, what is the what is the benefit? You understand what perforation means? So, so, so if I if I show you the if I show you the anode from here, so so say you are looking from here, okay? You are looking from here. Then then what? The anode may be a circular plate which is like that. Understand? So what we did was we made small holes in this. Let us see what happens. Okay. So if something is streaming from here, <coughs> some part of it may move through these perforations. Understand? And may hit the glass behind it. Is it not? Similarly, if we perforated the cathode, then something, this, this magenta thing, if it was moving from here to there, then it would cross this and hit there. It was seen that when we perforated the cathode, there was no, no kind of sign of something hitting here. But when we perforated the anode, actually things passed here and came and hit it here. They were, they, they were those green ones. Okay. These green ones maybe hit it here and there were small blips of light there. Understand? When it hit the glass, there were blips of light. Now what does that tell you? This tells you that in, in this whole setup, arrangement, a negatively charged thing, a negatively charged particle was 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 moving from moving to a node right it's moving to a node that was firmly established understand that was pretty well established They also put a zinc sulfide screen out here and you know that zinc sulfide has got phosphorescence. So if something strikes it, it blows. It blows a blip. Okay. Also, also the particles that were hitting here, they were dependent on the kind of glass that you were using. So, so many multiple experiments were done and it was pretty well established that there is a negative particle that is coming from here and hitting here. And since its origin was was the cathode. We called it the cathode rays. We call them the cathode rays. Understand? They were called the cathode rays.